The importance of neat pipe work, this is part three, making the steam inlet piping and a special coned union for the large steam tap on the boiler. In this clip it looks like the Stuart 500 boiler is sat on a steam plant with a beam engine. It's not, it's just that it's near the beam engine which I'm running in on the bench. A Stuart 500 boiler, the smallest one in the range, would be okay for such as a Victoria or a beam engine because they don't run very fast and they don't use a lot of steam. But this 500 boiler is part of the steam plant that my friend Dennis is building up. I thought it would help him out by piping up the plant because he doesn't have the parts to do this. And tomorrow I'm going to Dennis's house to test run the boiler and the Stuart S50 steam engine. Both the boiler and the engine came from a customer in America. But as my friend Dennis gives me bits and pieces from time to time, I just thought it would reciprocate. Here, I'm planning the pipe layout for the steam inlet from the boiler. Normally, for the steam pipe to a small engine, I would use 5 30 seconds of an inch or 4 mm diameter copper tubing. Note to self, buy some 4 mm copper tubing because I've run out. This copper tubing is 1 8 of an inch in diameter and it's a bit small but it will be fine for this steam plant. This short series is about making the piping neat and before I started with any of the piping I sat down and thought about it. Here I'm fitting a coned union onto the end of the pipe then I took it into the outer part of the workshop and silver soldered it to the pipe and in this clip I'm fixing the pipe to the T-piece on the inlet. This is a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut. You will notice with the steam piping I'm purposely keeping it very low on the steam plant because this actually will get quite hot. And in this position there's less chance of anybody touching it. Normally I would lag a steam pipe using some string wound around it. Lagging steam piping takes quite a long time and it's very tedious. I think I'll show my friend Dennis how to do it. This is a special adapter union cone. It sits in the tap on the top of the boiler and this particular union is to accommodate a 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. I thought it would be a good idea to make a steam union cone to fit directly onto the 1 8 of an inch diameter pipe. I fitted the original union cone into my Boxford lathe chuck. Then I set the angle of the tool to match the angle of the taper. Nothing difficult here. The next part of the job was to find a suitable piece of brass and purely by luck I found a piece in my scrap box that was already tapered at the end. So it was a very simple job to clean up this existing taper using the tool. And in no time at all I had the same taper angle on the end of this piece of brass as on the union cone. Time to face across the front just to clean it up and make the tapered part about the same size as a small union cone I use as a pattern. In this clip I'm using a parting tool to reduce the diameter of the piece of brass so that it fits in the union nut. To get this part to the right size I did of course use a micrometer but unfortunately my hand was in the way and all I got was a nice picture of the back of my hand. After centre drilling the part I drilled it all the way through with a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill. After drilling the hole in the brass to a sufficient depth, I cleaned across the front to make this part exactly the same size as the commercial fitting. If you leave the cone too long, it's likely to bottom when you tighten it onto the tap, and that wouldn't seal properly. And that's about it really. All I have to do now is part off the finished component. Before people write in giving me advice about putting things in the end of parts when you part them off, I thought I would preempt it by doing it in this tutorial. After parting off the component, it's time to silver solder it to the copper pipe. With the cone that I've just made fitted in the tap, I'm pushing the pipe into the cone. I've cleaned it up first using some Scots Brite, and now to make sure I don't get it too far into the fitting, I'm marking it with a felt tip pen. Not forgetting to make sure both of the union nuts were on the pipe, I silver soldered the pipe into the union cone that fits into the tap on the top of the boiler. In this clip I'm assembling the finished piece of piping, starting by fitting the pipe to the T-piece that supports the displacement lubricator. In this clip I'm having a quick check that everything fits together. Not wishing to be picky, but I could actually straighten the pipe a little bit more, but I will leave that for Dennis to do. At 83, 
It's something he can do to keep him off the streets. You will see Dennis's interesting workshop in the next video. The time is currently 10.30 in the morning. Once I've finished this voiceover and edited everything together, by the time it's uploaded to YouTube, I will take it down to Dennis's house and we're going to give it a steam test. I'm just checking that everything works. I notice that the displacement lubricator is dripping a little bit, so I'll tighten the valve at the bottom and I might as well drain the water out of it while I'm at it. As usual, I didn't tighten up the steam union on the engine end. I do this a lot and I don't know why, it's just something that I do wrong. Often there are so many things going through my mind at the same time, I forget essential things like breathing. To finish this episode, I thought I would run the beam engine on compressed air, just to show how quiet it is. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.